of science, and uh, yeah, I think I got electricity kind of tied up. So I figured I'll go over some of that. Um, it's all fitting together. It's all gravity. Go figure. Anyway, I'll first handle the comments. No, really, nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing in the comment section is worth anything. Really disappointed in people. People just suck. But I already knew that, so I shouldn't be surprised. Anyway, LOL, Amanda wants to pay $1,000 to get his ass fucked by a physicist. Yeah, yeah whatever. Uh, again, yeah, 2000 10000 Does it matter what the, you know, how big a bounty I have to pay? The point is, I'm certainly not afraid of them. I'm not afraid they're going to present me with a dilemma or a problem I can't overcome in terms of defending this. So, that's your contribution, though. Fuck you. You suck. Damn, quite a specific sex fantasy. Yeah, what, whatever. Yeah, it's all just joke to you people, right? It's all just a big fucking goddamn joke. And again, let's just be clear on this. 200 years ago, a guy came up with this theory, and they discounted and disposed of it for little bullshit reasons of, you know, heat and momentum problems, that if you really understood physics, you know, that, you know, atoms aren't in a medium, they're not floating around in a dish of water, if you understood physics, frictionless environments, kinetics, you'd understand that those two issues weren't even issues. So, I mean, you know, you, physics has fucking shit on its face, and you're sitting there pointing fingers at me. You're just amazing, fucking little twat. I'll just block these assholes. So this guy's even worse. I thought he was on food stamps. How do you have a $1,000 on food? I mean, whatever. Obviously, I live, you know, a pretty simple life, asshole. And so, yeah, whatever money I do have, I can devote to other purposes in life. You know, feeding cats and whatnot. Um, but really, is this an issue? Are you, why, why don't you go on every paper that mentions Einstein, and you can talk about how he fucked over his first wife and abandoned his kid. Why don't you do that? Because that's so fucking relevant, isn't it? No, it isn't relevant. Man, you just, you just, you just fucking suck. As a human being, you suck. And then he complains here, I don't have time, I have to work, sleep, wake up, sleep. And troll the internet with trolly little petty shit comments. So apparently you have time to do this slop. Fucking asshole. Uh, let's see. I just want to say Amendum is only wrong on this topic and not philosophy. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, you're not making an argument that I'm wrong in any way whatsoever. You're just being a Weasley troll like all the other assholes that are assholes. And the fact that you might agree with me on some philosophical issues doesn't mean anything because you're still a motherfucking cunt asshole. All right? I'd rather you didn't agree with me because then we'd be, then we could have perfect agree disagreement, which would mean I could be completely right. Because I, I have to doubt, I might be wrong philosophically if assholes like you think I'm right. You're, you're a countersign to my credibility philosophically, you stupid cunt. Because you're not making a goddamn argument that means anything here. Not anything close to an argument that means anything here. And you're not going to ed 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 elucidate exactly why he's wrong. Very brave of you, lol, exactly. Uh, so then this asshole. Uh, I'm guessing that Gary provides zero mathematical substance to his theory. Well, again, what, what math would, uh, should I redo? Again, you don't understand the idea of describing causes and effects, right? Effects have a whole lot of math. Causes don't really have a whole lot of math, asshole. All right? I'm not going to have to redo uh, uh, the inverse square rule of gravity, the inverse square rule of magnetism, because quite obviously that math has already been done. And this diagram already fits it. It fit it 200 fucking years ago, jackass. Why should I do 200 year old math over again? All right, it already fits the equations. It already fits the goddamn effects, you jackass. I don't have to redo math that works, stupid fuck. And the rest of it's all kinetic. Kinetic math is just thing goes in at 30 degrees, thing leaves at 70 degrees. Kinetic math isn't even, it's, it's grammar school fucking math. All right, the fact that my math isn't going to have a bunch of obtuse, silly, idiotic, moronic, uh, asshole, bullshit symbols all over the goddamn place that uh, mean something different on Wednesdays and Saturdays and then on, you know, a Thursday with an R in it or something, it'll mean something else. Yeah, I'm not going to give you any of that kind of shit math. But, I mean, this is just so stupid. 
It's a description. It's a model, you fucking cunt. You don't understand what a model is? Models don't need math because models model something. They work. You can actually measure it right on the model. I can draw you a fucking picture of it, and then you can just look at it and see it and say, Oh yeah, that's how it is. You get it, stupid fuck? This is so fucking annoying. Uh, zero math goes up. Instead, saying that Einstein already did the math. I didn't say that. I'm saying Einstein's math is complete bullshit on general relativity. And, well, special relativity is a crock of shit also. Neither one of them makes any fucking goddamn sense if you take it to their conclusions. They come up with ideas like spontaneous events are no longer spontaneous. You can actually have two events. Well, like I said, you could have your own birth somehow happening after you already exist. Uh, coupled with him saying it's all photons consolidated and condensed into patterns to create what we know as electrons. Well, I mean, repeating me doesn't mean anything. Is this a fucking argument? Oh, you're repeating me. That makes an argument. No, that's how it works, shithead. He needs math, a pure data, to prove that. How exactly, again, how do you prove, okay, something that is... Let's see, how do I, how's the best way to describe this? I mean, I can't give you time dilation experiments unless you're willing to be shot into space at a few hundred thousand, well, I, no, it had to be at least 50,000 miles a second. So are you willing? Can I put you in a fucking accelerator and then we'll see when you say, uncle, you know, how about we do that? We'll take you to the fucking halon thingy or whatever and spin you around a few zillion times until you're going really, really fast and we'll see how long you still live. He needs math beer David. Well, he's right on how the LHD data is so abstract and nearly unreadable to the layman. At least they have something to show. Well, I guess what, what do they have to show? Uh, they have a, a zillionth of a zillionth of a second something exists, and they're saying, well, because it existed for a zillionth of a second, that means it must be part of atoms. I think that's kind of jumping to a conclusion. And again, why use that as evidence when you even are a little bit skeptical of it? Uh, and uh, anyway, none of that particle data has much to do with this model anyway. Okay, I mean, it's just, it really doesn't. It's, it's not a working model, so why should I give a fuck about the standard model? It doesn't work. Um, Gary's model over math approach seems to be nothing but a device to skip. Not really what he meant to cheat to prove it. Um, again, I, I, should I redo Newton? I don't need to redo most of the math, and most of the math, as I'm pointing out, is going to be math on, on the level of the atomic structure, which is all kinetic. This gravity is kinetic, all right? So the math, you have to first, uh, fir first you have to get, the, the last step is going to be getting the interior of the atom down, and then you can really start doing some math. But I mean, the, the rest of the math is, again, I'm not saying uh, 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 4 anymore. Uh, what I'm saying is the causes for the effects we see in the world are different than what they think they are. And if they get the right causes, okay, what I'm saying is, is they're probably going to be able to do even better equations. They'll be able to clean those equations up because they'll figure out all the part that was just made up. The made up constants and whatnot. But anyway, I'm just so sick of this whole argument, this math argument. It's just so fucking idiotic. Uh, there was very little math that goes with a lot of, uh, of um, like evolution. Where's the math for evolution? Oh, there's no math. Yeah, you don't need math to understand the theory of evolution. Okay, so this is just, to, to say that physics is only math is idiotic. Physics is about relationships and why things do things. And you, you, you see that abstractly. Well, where's the, where's the math in Einstein's bent space? It was a model that was descriptive. And, and it's exactly the same function. The math is exactly, it's not my fault that it's the same math, but it turns out that shadows are the same as dimpling um, um, uh, uh, fabric with a weight. It, it creates the same kind of paraboloblic, paraboloblic curve in terms of how much as you get as you, as you increase distance how much the the force weakens it, and, already, and Newton already did it uh, anyway um, let's see Gary needs to make math for this I, again I don't need to but this is just so obnoxious 
If you tell me what formula you want a formula for, I'll give you the formula. What formula do you want? I mean, I can't give you the exact formula for the, the, the density of magnetism because I'd have, first have to know exactly what the material is made of, how much iron's in the material, and go through all that kind of crap. But it's going to be the same math as they're using right now. The only math I'm saying is different is going to be the, the two-slit experiment, for example. That math, I'll just point out how they got the triangle in the wrong place. But again, it's going, to be the same, it's going to be the same variables in the equation. It's just going to be you're going to identify the cause of the effect differently. Oh, anyway, you just don't understand cause and effect. Um, no physicist is going to <coughs> review illustrative stories unless also provide rigorous mathematical proofs to substantiate them. Again, these rigorous proofs how? I'm, I'm going to prove that shadowing is the same as the inverse square law? Well, that's already was proven 200 years ago. Why should I have to prove that again? Explain? Do you want to answer the question? Do I, do I really? What? Should I prove it all four times it applies? It applies to electricity, it applies to magnetism, it applies to gravity. And it's, and it's my fault that physicists didn't figure it out a long time ago that maybe if, it, if the same rule applies to gravity, magnetism and the electrical force that maybe it's the same thing causing it maybe all right anyway your idea seems reminiscent of stochastic electrodynamic well yeah well i don't know to who to somebody who's drunk uh, yeah they they yes they make up i don't even understand it okay go look at the wikipedia page to go go ahead take a fucking paragraph take a sentence from it that's saying something similar to what i'm saying please because i really don't understand the reminiscentness fucking dumbass oh god i hate these people no i haven't i haven't looked into it except yes i read two paragraphs on wikipedia and said what the fuck why is this asshole making me read this shit because he's an asshole on the fucking internet. A stupid dumb cunt on the internet. Uh, the video with 100 endings and such. Well, whatever, Satchmo. So anyway, so just all useless comments. Just useless tripe crap. I just wish, I just wish these people would be more accountable. I wish these people had real icons and real identity. So when I'm fucking win, I can force them to eat fucking shit. I can shit down their goddamn fucking throats with their fucking bullshit. You fucking cowards. You, you can't make a decent argument. This is the best you can do. You're saying I'm a crackpot. You're saying it's all nonsense. And yet you big brave atheists can't come up with the argument. You can't come up with one fucking statement that says this is why it can't be right. Yeah, that's right, because I've already taken care of that. I've already played the Feynman videos. I've already been through all their fucking counter-arguments. And I've annihilated them. They're nonsense. And you don't like me saying that. Oh, God, I just hate you people. Anyway. All right, let me just do the other comments real quick, and then we'll get to electricity. But you people really don't know shit. You really are just such a bunch of ignorant motherfuckers. All right, logical empiricist guy going out to block him. Oh, fuck this idiot. Um, what about chemistry? If the quantum bullshit goes, then there's also no quantum chemistry. You really don't understand shit, do you? Yes, there's no quantum biology. There's no quantum chemistry per se. Okay, because quantum is an effect of the smallest particles in the universe. That's why it's called quantum, shithead. All right, so it has to do with electrons and photons. Yes, electrons have something to do with chemistry. Okay, and, and uh, so obviously there's going to be some sort of connection to the interaction between photons and electrons and the binding of, uh, of molecules to each other. But there is no quantum chemistry. It's, it's, like, it's like saying the social mind. Okay, it's rubbish. It's bullshit. There is no social mind. Okay, there's a bunch of individual minds. Oh, God. You, I mean, this is just pseudoscience, you know, phenomenon are at play in biology. See, it takes it all the way up to the biological level. It can't be at play. I'm sorry. You just don't understand what physics is. Physics is a trillion times smaller than biology, fuck brain. Anyway, it, it calls him, like I said, logical. He's got logical in his name. There's no logic at this bullshit. So then this, the coax guy who, I, you know, politely asked not to be rude 
You know, GPS wouldn't function properly without them accounting for general relativity. There is a physical difference between satellites in orbit and people on the Earth from Wiki. And he gives me this bullshit, right? So I post him a link to the video I already did on the GPS thing, and I've already explained um, the phenomenon. I fin and I certainly explained it better than a Wiki page, which actually doesn't really explain it very well, because it's pointing out that it's 38 microseconds faster. Okay, and the faster part is because we're going much faster than we think, and you know, as we're bouncing along on the surface of the Earth. <sighs> so, but yeah, just you know, fuck you, people. I, I mean, there's no problem with him pointing out GPS, but like I said, he obviously hasn't watched my videos. It was in the title of one of my videos, GPS. I've already dealt with the fucking issue, so it's just bullshit to be bringing up crap I've already dealt with. As if I don't know what GPS is. I mean, just fuck you, you patronizing cunt. Take it someplace else, shithead. I mean, either win an argument with me, all right? You come to the table with a real sword or a real knife to shove up my ass, or don't come to the table, right? I mean, just don't be pulling out your I'm gonna get you, you know, your little gotcha dick, and then show up with nothing in your hand. Or a micro penis. <sighs> Stupid ass. So anyway, all right. So that's enough of this shit. All right. So as I pointed out when I did the magnetism video, that the the next tricky one was going to be electricity, and then uh, but I found some really, I, I I just some observations that just oh shit, it's so simple, it's so obvious. So I'll just get to the obvious part first, and then I'll maybe add some more detail to it just to give you some understanding. Um, but, um, the big difference between magnetism and electricity is that magnetism happens within the entire structure of matter. Like a magnet, it's all the atoms are lining up. All the atoms are, are creating a polarizing filter. And with electricity, it's only the surface that holds the charge. Only the surface is you got a layer of electrons on one side and a layer of protons, let's say, on the other side. An, an exposure of the, of the atomic ass. So, so if you just thought of it this way, uh, you know, like an atom, and just say that we know the, the atom is positive, the, the electron is negative, um, and um, what's happening is, you know, it's normally a nice circle, you know, in the center. I mean, you know, like the circle would be even, you know, s symmetrical. And let's say when something obtains a charge, an electrical charge, what's happening is basically the the nucleus to the atom is migrating, you know, is at one end and the electrons at the other end um, more of the time. And um, so, you know, basically it's got a plus at one end and a minus at the other end on the surface. So it's not about the interior atoms about the surface atoms that really matters with electricity so that's the big difference and so it's basically the same thing as gravity all right so you have the graviton comes in of, of various polarizations um, and it leaves okay the last thing it encounters is this surface so it goes in when when gravitons go through they're, they encounter a lot of electrons as they go from one end of a substance to the other end. And they might get um, polarized positive or negative and negative, positive. You know, they might have lots of different polarizations as they go through. But when it, an object is charged, then they're always going to leave, okay, based on the polarization, based on that charges, the, what that charge produces is polarization. So I would argue... You know, instead of plus and minus, I'm using a vertical line versus a horizontal line. Because that uh, better illustrates, in my opinion, the fact that positive is just a, a positive is a, the vertical filter, negative is the, the horizontal filter. And so what basically happens with charge is when you have a positive charge, it produces, it filters for the negative. So the negative ones are produced. So it... it changes the polarization of the gravitons to all being horizontal ones 
and a negative charge does exactly the opposite, changes them all to vertical ones. And these two go right, th these vertical ones go right through that field, the surface field, and these go right through the surface field of this one, you know, the charged field. And then they just act normally through the rest of the medium in terms of the, the gravitational impact. So they just get mixed up again and they fly out the same, with the same charge as they, le as they came in with. So it basically makes the ones going this way invisible in net effect. And that's why the two objects are then thrown together, is because there's a low pressure here again in the high pressure out here, in the sense that they're becoming invisible to the polarized, the oppositely polarized um, uh, gravitons. And, but it's just a surface effect. So that's the difference between it and magnetism, where magnetism is creating the effect of the polarization through permanent atomic alignments. This is charge is just something that arranges on surfaces. And the reason why magnetism and electricity, they don't seem, they, they seem associated but not directly connected. Like if you put a magnet next to something that's highly charged, the magnet will not be as dramatically affected as you would think. And it's probably because what they're doing is polarizing on a different axis. So magnetism is polarizing on this, these two axes, and electricity is polarizing on these two axes. And that would be the difference in terms of intensity. And it also gives a, the connection, though, where the one can polarize to the other by movement. So that's another thing to get into is how electrons, how energy, so I don't want to say electrons because it, it, it gets a little, electrons obviously move, but they also move photons, which is the bottom line. The bottom line is, is, is it's essentially um, photons that get moved with electric charge in the electrons. And whether those photons are actually gravity is, uh, I'm not certain of yet, that some gravity may be captured by um, the process of inducing electricity and that that gravity is what's being released. Um, but I, I can't, can't be sure of it yet, but that's what it has to do with this whole movement mechanism. So anyway, just for now anyway, I think that this does resolve the distinction between electricity and magnetism. It's both the same forces. One is just on the surface. There's a filter on the, the, the polarizing filter is just on the surface of the body and the other one, the polarizing filter, is within the whole metal, the whole structure of the body. So this is a much deeper filter where this is a much more superficial filter. But the end result is, is the last thing that will come out is going to be the thing on the surface. The surface is going to dictate what, what the polarization of the gravity is when it leaves. It will be many polarizations as it travels through and then it will leave all one because the surface is densely populated with the filtering electrons um, or protons as the case may be. Um, yeah, so that's, that's probably enough of an add-on until I gain, collect more information. Let me just see if there was something I wanted to point out. Um, so it's basically photon exposure, proton exposure versus electron exposure. That's what, elect, that's electricity. No electrons versus two, uh, lots of electrons is essentially the definition of charge. Um, and it's always got to be created that way, just with a magnet. It always has a north and a south. Um, charge always has a, a positive and a negative. Um, uh, no, that's not correct. It always is created um, with a positive and a negative, but the entire body is, this, this, the entire surface is charged. It's just charged neutral to its interior. So it's, it's, <laughs> okay, that's the right way to say it. Well, I just, I think just the idea of the surface is the important thing. So the difference from magnets, magnets got to have their poles. Charge doesn't have to have a pole, but
but um, for it to move, for the charge to move, there has to be a pull. So that's when the field is created. Is well, that's not when the field is created. Yeah, all right. Just never mind the last two minutes. I, you know, I, I'm trying to get to a point, and I just I'm not getting there yet because I should wait until I I'm ready to get there. And that's this whole migration of the charge through wires and all of that kind of stuff, because it's really going around the wires, and so it gets a little more complicated. Um, but why it induces magnetism is the part I want to get to, and um, I'm not ready for that yet. Uh, so let's see. Um, surface, uh, yeah, so again, the, the real key point is, is that it's all, the forces that push, push, that when things move towards each other, they're not moving towards each other, they're not being pulled towards each other, there's no attraction force, there's only push, so the whole system is made out of push, there's no pull forces anywhere, so all you do is eliminate force here through the fact that you make a force invisible to something, something becomes invisible to it. So the force is coming, there's a conversion, the force has changed, the polarization has changed. I can't see that kind of polarization, it goes right through me. So now there's an imbalance because the other side of me is still being pushed by the force. And uh, the stuff coming at me doesn't have an effect because of, of the polarization. So that's what really creates any attraction, any apparent attraction between two things is only being created because of the fact that there's an external force pushing them together. So it's all push, there's no pull. That's a big one. Um, so anyway, I, I, I wish to have done this a little better, but I think the important thing to understand is that key difference between electric charge and magnetism is that magnetism is something throughout a material it's a filter created through, through the entire mass or density of a material. Uh, and electri electric charge is just something that exists on the surface. Yeah, so that's enough. And I'll get to the rest. I'll get to the migration of electrons. So this is, so the tricky part of electrons is, is, you know, they could be just pushing. And as they push into each other, they pass on extra photons. So it could be that they're just moving photons from each other to each other and it has the appearance of movement but it's not really electrons moving it's just electrons migrating charge passing the charge on and the charge is in the form of photons. Photons are charge in the end. It's like a battery gets heavier okay when you fill it up with electricity and why does it get heavier? Well, it's got more photons in it. <laughs> you know, that's why it's heavier. It's, it could be the same number of electrons, but it's heavier because it's got more photons in it. Um, they're more, more capable of passing on those photons. Yeah, that still doesn't say it right. Yeah, well, I'll do some more thinking. And uh, I'm just saying that electricity, I think, might be a mixture of electrons moving and electrons um, pushing photons, passing them on. Yeah. But it, doesn't, it probably doesn't matter. I mean, overall, probably not a significant difference. But... Um, So, I mean, that's the part I'll work out next. It's just the, the round trip idea. The idea that the electrons go to move them. They have to go from a, a positive filter to a negative filter. They have to be migrated back home, so to speak. Back to the place they were taken from. Yeah. Um... And what else? And that this is all about um, just inducing velocities, not, um, you know, again, movement is not, something doesn't get literally pushed by gravity. Gravity changes the um, orientation of the matter. So it 
is it compels itself to move. It has the, the movement in its structure. It moves. It doesn't really get pushed. It just gets oriented to move. And it's sort of important to understand, I think. Pretty sure, anyway. Yeah. All right, anyway. I think that's enough. So, but again, electricity does, it obeys the same rule, you know, this idea of distance. And you have to understand that the distance thing, key to that is the idea that this this gravity force is always, you know, it's always, it's around everything. So it's always, you know, it's coming from all sides. It's coming in straight lines, though. So it can't just, can't just curve into a space to fill a void. And only the straight lines get through. And the same thing is when it's coming out, it's coming out like in this kind of a pattern. So as you get closer, you hit more of these these angled things will end up hitting this surface, but the further away they get, the more of these will miss, and so they'll no longer hit it. But the closer it gets, the more of this it hits. So, obviously, the more, um, you know, it's getting the invisible gravitons, and so that would be the reason why the force gets stronger is because the counter force is weaker and weaker and weaker the closer you get. And then um, the inverse is also true for the, the, the illusion of repulsion. Um, well, not illusion. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the actual repulsion is, is the idea, again, that the, the is, you could think of it radiating out. And the further away you get, the less you're going to hit, the less exposure there's going to be. Just clearly, you're just going to miss more and more of the light. is isn't going to hit you, so to speak. It's shadow is a very good word because photons are essentially light. And they behave like light would behave. That's the inverse square rule. Okay. Yeah, that's probably enough. I'll do a better job of this, but I just wanted to make the video because I had, you know, um, uh, I said, ah, it's that surface thing. That's the key to this. Like, that's the key distinction between magnetism and electricity. One is a mass phenomenon, and the other one's a surface area phenomenon. The more the surface area, the more force. The other one, the greater the mass, the more force. So, okay, enough said. Till next time, the more conversion to polarization, to specific polarization, all the way up.